Hello world, my name is Tony and I am a professional colorist. I've been working in DaVinci Resolve for about six years now. I learned so much from other colorists that have been kind enough to share their skills over the years. So let me share three tips with you and help you improve your color grading skills. And please, if you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. It would mean the world to me. But let's get to the action. Tip number one, find a hero shot. And what do I mean by hero shot? Well, if you take a look at this example, a hero shot is a shot in the frame that represents what you are going to grade within that scene. So if you take a quick scroll through this clip here, you'll see here in the end, it gets out of focus and uh, you wouldn't want to grade on this frame if you need to pull some qualifiers later. So here actually in this first frame, uh, setting the first frame as a hero shot would be a good thing. So I'm gonna press M, insert a marker there. And if you click the three dot menu up here, you have the option to show marker overlays. If I go to the next clip here and quickly scroll through, see there's not much of a change here. So I'll just use the first frame as well. And on the third clip, scroll through the clip you see what's about the talent is coming from inside walking out in the sun and so you wouldn't want to grade on this frame where you couldn't see her skin or her face and you wouldn't want to do it on this frame either so probably go down to something like this would be a great frame press m and you have your marker here now you can jump between markers by using shift down arrow an up arrow and it will jump from marker to marker and clip to clip. You could also go to the edit page and you could change your marker colors if you want them to be something else. So it's easier for you to get a sense of where your marker points are. You could just change the colors of them. And again, shift up and down arrow. It will take you from frame to fr uh, from a hero shot to hero shot. So that's a good way of doing it. If you do not like these marker overlays, again, go to the three dot menu up here, click that and, and disable show marker overlays and you have your full frame. Tip number two, use less notes. And why do you want to use less notes? Well, you don't want to have a note tree that looks something like this with all kinds of uh, notes going on and layer mixes and uh, it, of course it can be useful it can be necessary it can be what you need um, and sometimes that's what you end up with but you don't want to start with a note tree that looks like that it's it's complex it takes a long time to to um, to get to where you want so you want to as easily and fast as possible to get to where you want. So start with creating like three or four notes and do the overall broad strokes and you can easily copy paste one grade to another clip. Let me demonstrate that. So the first note here, I would do something like an exposure note and I would use the broad strokes, something like an offset adjustment here. So let me just go to the waveform so you can see the levels and the balance so i would bring it down maybe a little bit i would look at her skin it could maybe bring up a little more detail a little more highlight not too much i don't want to burn out anything on her skin so something like this offset and lift gamma gain very broad adjustment before and after and then you could go to a you could do a balance note or maybe you introduce a little bit of warmth in her skin and in the highlights, something like that. And maybe counter that, take a little bit out of the shadows. So you have a balance note like that. And then you could have a third note where you could do, let's say you want to add a little bit of extra contrasts maybe change the pivot point a little bit, maybe add a little bit of saturation overall. 
So we call this contrast and oops, what happened there? Let's go back. Call that contrast and saturation. So very broad strokes. Let me turn these off and on. And now we have another clip from the same scene here. We can select that middle mouse click the first clip and we have a grade that is very, very similar. Now, if we look at them side by side here, in full screen, you can see they're not the exact same. You can see this is a tad cooler than the original. So if I bypass, I can see, yeah, if I look at the vector scopes here and go to the first clip, if you see the vector scope down here as I change, you can see the second one is a little bit cooler. So that's very easily fixed. I go into the balance node, warming it up a little bit. And now if I have the two clips selected and go on full screen, they're very close. I could warm that up a little bit and have them. So you get the point here. It's very easy with broad strokes and as few notes as possible to get close to where you want to be. And later on, if you need it, you can start doing micro adjustments, but always start with as few notes as possible. Tip number three, go heavy and dial it back. And what do I mean by go heavy and dial it back? Well, if we go to the hero frame in this shot, and uh, let's start by doing an exposure note like we did before. So I'm going to adjust the levels. Let me just go back to my waveform here. I'm going to go too far with the blacks here and then dial it back a little bit. And the same with the gamma, looking at her skin, bring it up too high, bring it back a bit. And the same with the gain, go way too high, dial it back. Kind of like find a, a level you like, something like this. Call this exposure note. And let's for this, let's for this one do a balance and contrast note, balance and contrast note and for the balance, I'm going to add a lot of warmth in the midtones. When you look at her skin, this is way too much. So dial it back, add some blues to the shadows and go too far and bring it back. Something like this. something like this. So, and now we go to, to the contrast and take the contrast too far. So you can see this is obviously way too much and bring it back. And the reason for doing is you kind of like find the limit of what you can do to the image. you kind of find like the outer boundaries and it's much easier to, for you to see how much wiggle room you have and where you can take the image. If you once go too far and dial it back, you know, okay, this is as far as I can go in that direction. This is as far as I can go in this direction. And it's also more easily, more easy for you to kind of like adjust to the look of the, the image and um, to get a feel for where, where it should sit naturally and where you could do to push it. So go big and dial it back. That's my suggestion for tip number three.